All right, well, I guess it's about time to give you guys an update on my project and let you know that uh, the 31-day build challenge obviously has officially ended. So you can see behind me the, uh, the main gear, landing gear, has been installed and bolted up. And we've got tires on. So huge milestone. Very happy to have uh, gotten to this point now um, through the holidays. My goal was to get this entirely on its landing gear, uh, but as you know, certain things sometimes take a little longer than originally expected. So, um, but here we are. The uh, the mains are on. I just mounted the uh, the front nose wheel to the the rim, the split rim, last night. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is a leak uh, due to the, the split rim, so I have to address that. All right, and just a just a quick note about the uh, mounting of the main gear here. Uh, Zenith supplies in the kit these rubberized silicone little pads, if you will they get jammed in there and bolted down, kind of squashed together. And honestly, I've heard kind of mixed reviews on how long they last, uh, if they get dried out or slip out or whatnot. And, you know, at the same time, I hear people have no issues with them whatsoever. Um, however, talk to Jonathan over in the UK who has the uh, Metal Seagulls, I think is the name of his company. He's a Zenith dealer out there. And what he's come up with is basically cutting a conveyor belt that is uh, belted inside internally, I think with like a nylon belt. And it's literally twice the thickness of one of these. So that does two things. Uh, one, it gives you a little bit more of a, a cushion. Two, being that it's, it's twice the thickness. He said over time, um, if you have, a, let's, let's not say a hard landing, but just a firm landing, the bolt that sticks out under the the mount here eventually starts to kind of peck at the landing gear. So this gives you a little bit more clearance from the bottom of that bolt threads so it doesn't peck into this over time. And it's twice the thickness, so I get a half inch lift kit <laughs> by bolting on this piece of rubber. So that's been installed. Finally, the, uh, the cabin frame is, uh, is not only sitting in place, but it is final riveted in place. Um, I opted to go up to the uh, AS5s, which is a stainless steel rivet um, everywhere, uh, being that the Super Duty is a little bit heavier airplane, heavier engine and whatnot, and they use the stainless steel rivets there, as well as there is a AN3 bolt uh, on an L angle that attaches to the Laundron, so I decided to go ahead and drill out one of the rivets, upsize it to a hole for a bolt instead of a rivet. Um, a couple of little things that I've done here and there that is done on the Super Duty that really doesn't cost anything, isn't a weight penalty, and I decided to go ahead and just uh, install it as if it was the Super Duty. And the other thing, of course, that is mounted forever now is uh, the rudder pedals. Rudder pedals are in and bolted together here. Uh, unfortunately, I did, I did not uh, bolt in the cylinders for the brakes. I decided, very last minute decision, to send those back to Matco. Uh, they have an option to upgrade the cylinders. They call them an intensifier, which basically changes out the uh, the piston and the bore uh, in trade for higher pressure. So, to be in the eye upsized to the 21 inch tires and change geometry of that, uh, it's been suggested to go ahead and do the intensifiers to get a little bit more pressure to the calipers to have some more stopping force. But uh, I'll have to wait. Uh, probably about a, a week or so to get those back and then I'll be able to install the cylinders, run the brake lines. Uh, one thing to note, I added here in the middle, there's three bolts, three N AN hardware bolts that uh, install the, uh, the torque tubes on the rudder pedals. And I added an aluminum plate there for two reasons. One, it's kind of a safety backup in the event. I know it has not been an issue, but in the event that green um, I'm not sure if it's nylock, nylon, whatnot, um, pillow block there, cracks. Uh, add, 
adding the aluminum will add as a safety kind of sandwiching everything together. So there's the added benefit of, of the safety, redundancy, and it gives you something to mount things on. I've seen several people put um, little clamps or whatnot, 8L clamps to hold brake lines or wiring, and that would be a good place right in the middle of the airplane to fasten things down. And I think I've touched on this before. You can see behind me now that everything is painted that is attached to the actual airframe itself. There's other covers and uh, you know sheet metal parts that are riveted in later that have not been painted yet. Um, the one piece you see back there in the flat, that is only in primer. Um, basically, I'm doing a two-tone gray and black. And that part, the way I installed it, um, kind of stuck in place. So I couldn't really remove it to paint it. So I just primed it um, in place and then taped it off. So I'll be able to paint that black here really soon and then the other panels. But yeah, it'll be a mostly gray and then all the top surfaces, anything that's level essentially will be painted black all the way up to the uh, instrument panel. And then the instrument panel, I plan on doing a gray so that the avionics, which are black, will pop off of the panel. I think that's a really good look. Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com Avionation at AvionationUSA.com Check the description below for links to these great companies. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. And regarding the 31 day build challenge, guys, I just want to say that was a lot of fun. And quite a few people really got involved this year and shared what's going on in their, their shop and their, their hangar. And we had quite a few new people join in. So I want to give a quick shout out to the ones I see that posted on a regular basis uh, during the, the month of December. So let me just run through a, a quick name call here, if you will. Um, Jeff O'Rear with uh, Hats Classic Biplane. Algie Yates, uh, Fisher Youngster. Darren Towers, a Zenith CH750 Stoll, which I believe he's going to get his inspection this week. Um, David Weber, who's building a Glass Air 2, or helping with a Glass Air 2. Uh, Simon Osborne, who's building an Aerosport Scamp. Don Watson came back again this year, and he's continuing, of course, to share on his Frankenstein build. Had a really awesome time sharing his, uh, his cowling, all-metal cowling build. Um, Don Watson, uh, Kevin Olson, who's building a Kit Fox, shared a lot. Josh Duff, I think he finished a, um, an ultralight and now is building a Bearhawk LSA. Vance Simmons returns. Uh, Vance Simons, he returns on his Zenith 701 doing some updates. Thanks, Vance, for uh, chiming in again and, and uh, doing something every day. Uh, Jamie Pujol who's building a Zenith 701, just getting started, but really, really knocked a lot of stuff out. I've been watching his uh, posts. And thanks for the Tundra Tire video, by the way. I really found that to be very helpful. Dan Reynolds, all the way on the other side of the planet in freezing cold weather, is building two Chinooks. Um, Madi Morum, if I'm saying that correct, is also building a Kit Fox, and he's working a lot on his interior. Shared a lot of updates on that. Fred W. Bowman is building a Murphy Rebel, um, and he pulled his first rivets, so he shared that in the group. So congratulations on, on really getting started with uh, pulling rivets. Uh, Michael Hildebrand is building a Zenith 750 Cruiser, like I am. He shared quite a bit. Uh, Jack Jackson is building a Zenith 701 from scratch, from plans only. Good job with that. Uh, Luke Painter is also building a Murphy Rebel and made a lot of progress during the month of December. Uh, Josh Vincent continues to build with his RANS S21 with a turbo Yamaha. Of course, we're all waiting to see how that comes together and the performance numbers. And then he wasn't in the group, but accepted the challenge within another group and posted literally, I think, every day. And that's John Hassard, who is building a Space Walker 2. So I just want to give a little shout out to all of you all. Thank you so much for 
contributing and to accepting the challenge and getting a lot of uh, work done on your projects for an early start into 2022. That will really help get some real momentum going for your projects moving forward. And everybody is welcome to join. Just look up on Facebook, search for Experimental Aircraft Channel Group and uh, join. And if you're not ready to build, you're, you're welcome to come and follow along and watch um, everybody building what they're building. And the purpose of building the group was that you didn't have to go to this specific group or that specific group and you could see a good cross section of several different aircraft at the same time in the same group and to see the progress of, uh, of what everybody is doing. And to be honest, this has been a really good push for me to get going on my project uh, and to get it flying this year. So I've got a lot of things. I'm gonna work a little bit different this year. I'm actually gonna put some hard dates on the calendars for goals and work towards them. I'm finding that I work a lot better under pressure uh, and I just have to get this done, right? So I'll be updating you guys here soon. I should hear back in a couple of days uh, with Chris. We're gonna put a hard date on building my engine and we'll have probably a two or three part series on that engine build. So that's happening soon. Uh, right after that, I'll be trying, I need to figure out a way to build this custom mount. So I'll be looking around for some way to help out with building a custom engine mount, exhaust, uh, and then we have a lot of avionics work to do. So that's coming up also in another short series of avionics installations. So everyone, thanks for following along. Thanks for your support on this channel for subscribing and uh, helping us to reach more people about experimental light sport and ultralight aviation.